Hands. So I welcome you to the lecture series on Introduction to Cybersecurity. And today our topic is Packed and Obfuscated Malware. Where we are in the basic analysis portion of malware analysis and myself, Dr. Dipros Dibor. So let's start today's class. Malware writers often use packing and obfuscation to make their files more difficult to detect or analyze. So you should note that this packing or this obfuscation, these terms are related to the malware writers. They use them to make it uh, difficult to analyze the those uh, harmful threats they have been creating. Okay, so obfuscated programs are the ones whose execution the malware author has attempted to hide. You should note it down. Obfuscated programs are those whose execution the malware author has attempted to hide, and packed programs are a subset of obfuscated programs in which the malicious program is compressed and cannot be analyzed. And this, both of the techniques will severely limit your attempts to statically analyze the malware. Now we'll go in details uh, regarding both of them, means like first one obfuscated and then next one packed. So starting with the obfuscation. So malware obfuscation. Definition is that malware obfuscation is a process that makes textual and binary data difficult to understand. It helps adversaries to hide critical words known as strings a program uses because they reveal patterns of the malware's behavior. And I hope you all understood by the term string in case of malware analysis because in the last lecture, I have discussed about these strings in details. So you go through the last lecture if you find it difficult to understand it. Okay, then examples of these strings would be registry keys or infected URLs like them. Okay, so this is the overall definition. Now, adversaries commonly use this encryption or encoding techniques to conceal data from security programs. Sometimes they go to a step further and use special tools known as packers to obfuscate the entire program, which makes reverse engineering and analysis much more difficult. Okay, so up to now, I hope you have got that what is actually obfuscation and how the packers term related to it. Okay, so repeating again. This is a process that makes textual and binary data difficult to understand. So, related to those different strings, they are uh, actually hiding, and this makes the analysis process of the malware really very difficult. Either you go through the reverse engineering process, that will also be difficult if this obfuscation process is applied by the those uh, different malware editors. Okay, now. Examples of malware obfuscation techniques. Malware creators routinely utilize these techniques to complicate the detection of their code. And one SaaS commonly used technique is XOR. You may note down XOR. Okay. And this is a popular method of obfuscation that conceals data so it cannot be analyzed. Okay. And it does this by swapping the contents of two variables inside the code. XOR, uh, XOR, you all guys know that when we use this. Okay. Now, with respect to the registers, when we can apply the XOR techniques, please go through it because uh, this is very useful. Okay. You have to know about this. So, one popular method, if someone asks you that, to give me an example of popular method of obfuscation, then XOR belongs to that, like XOR, EBX, and EAX. I hope you guys know what is EBX and what is EAX. Then XOR, EAX, and EBX. Then XOR, EBX, and EAX. So we are trying to do what? We are trying to swap the contents of two variables inside the code for this XOR technique. 
Now coming to the packing. Packing, as I have already told you, that this is a subset of obfuscation. A packer is a tool that modifies the formatting of the code by compressing and encrypting the data. Though often used to delay detection of malicious code, there is still legitimate use of packing. Okay, some legitimate use uh, includes like protecting intellectual property or other sensitive data from being copied. So you see that this packing may not be always used for the malware means uh, treat purpose. It may sometimes for legitimate use also. Okay, now stop. What is stop? A stop is a small portion of code that contains the decryption or decompression as and used to decrypt the packed file. This is very important, so I am repeating again. A stop is a small portion of code that contains the decryption or decompression as and used to decrypt the packed file. Clear? So we use stop for decrypting the packed file. Now, what are the steps involved in the packing process? The original code is uploaded into the packet tool and goes through the packer process to compress or encrypt the data. So overall, as you have already seen that we are dealing with encryption or con compression during the packing process. Okay. Then the original portable executable header, PE header, which consists of executable image and object files and original code are compressed or encrypted and stored in the packed section of the new executable. So the packed file consists of new PE header, the packed section, the decompression stop used to unpack the code. Now during the packing process, the original entry point is relocated or obfuscated in the packed section and this is very important for anyone trying to analyze the code. And this process makes the identifying the import address table and original entry point very difficult. So the decompression stop is used to now unpack the code upon delivery. So overall, these are the steps involved in case of packing. So you take a screenshot of this, okay, go through each of the step. Now, if someone asks you some examples of popular packers, then you may note this then. UPX, Kaminta, the Enigma Protector, VM Protect, Obsidium, Empress, EXE Packer 2.300, then EX is still. So what you can do, at least you can go through three or any three of them, pick any three of them, and have a prepare a case study on them. Okay, that will help. So guys, in today's class, we discuss in details about the obfuscation and the packing process. As you have seen that, this packing is a subset of obfuscation, and this obfuscation process makes the textual and binary data difficult to understand. Okay. So actually, it tries to hide the, uh, them, those strings, okay? And you already know that these strings help us to analyze the manalyze, uh, malware, okay? So I think these two topics, they are very important, clear to know. Now I'm coming to the today's question. And today's question is, these are the reference you may note. The today's questions for the lecture is that what do you understand by obfuscation and what are EBX and EAX? So comment your answer. Okay, I will go through them. So guys, take care. Meet you in the next lecture. Till then, bye-bye.